In this chapter, we're going to explore the calculus of exponential and logarithmic functions. In this lesson, we'll be looking at logarithmic differentiation. Okay, hi everybody. So, in this lesson here, we're going to take a look at um, using logarithms to help us differentiate expressions that would either be really complicated to take the derivative of or actually impossible based on rules that we have thus far here. So I'm just going to show you uh, a handful of examples. We're just going to jump right in. Instead of kind of giving you a theory behind it, I'm just going to show you what this looks like and hopefully after you see the model uh, done a couple of times you get the hang of what's going on here. So let's take a look at an example here. Let's say y is equal to e to the x multiplied by the square root of x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2 cubed. Okay, now if you th think about that for a second here, I'm asking you to take the derivative of it. At first here, uh, what I see primarily are, uh, is an example of the quotient rule, because I've got a function over a function here. Uh, to take the derivative of the numerator, I see the product rule and a chain rule uh, occurring here. Actually, in fact, I might, let's, let's make this even a little bit more interesting. Let's make this e x to the fifth. Uh, just to throw that in here. So I've got actually two examples of the chain rule in the numerator. And then the denominator is going to be an example of the chain rule and I expand that out. Now this isn't even a particularly difficult expression to take the derivative of. It's just going to be long. Okay, And, and really comparatively speaking, uh, not even like really long, but it is going to be a little bit awkward here. So here's what we can do. We can actually take the log or the natural log of both sides. So this will be the natural log of e x to the fifth square root of x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2 cubed. Now, because of the laws of logarithms, I'm allowed to expand this out. So I'm going to make this into the natural log of y, and this is going to now be the natural log of e to the x uh, to the fifth plus the natural log of the square root of x squared plus 1 minus, because of the division there, the natural log of x squared plus 2 cubed. Okay, so I'm using the, the laws of logarithms to split this up uh, as much as I can here. Now I'm going to deal with the exponents. So this becomes the, the natural log of y will equal uh, x to the fifth natural log of e plus one-half natural log of x squared plus one, <coughs> sorry, minus three multiplied by the natural log of x squared plus two. Okay, well now I've used the laws of logarithms to split this up a whole bunch. Now I'm just going to take the derivative. So the derivative of the natural log of y, and it, bear in mind I have to do it like this because uh, I've got y locked within a function here, so this is going to be an example of implicit differentiation. So this is going to become right here, 1 over y, y primed. Uh, natural log of e is just 1, so really I'm just dealing with the derivative of x to the fifth, so it'll be 5x to the fourth. Uh, here, this is going to be plus 1 half, there's my exponent, and then the derivative of the natural log will be 1 over x squared plus 1. And then I multiply by the derivative of what's inside, right? That x squared plus 1, and that's just going to be 2x. And right now I can see that the 2's are going to cancel there. And then this is going to be minus 3 multiplied by the... Do I have x squared? Oh, it's x squared plus 2. I was going to say all of a sudden, oh, are those the same? I could have combined those, but they're not. So this will become uh, 3 multiplied by 1 over x squared plus 2. And then once again, multiplied by the derivative of that inside function, the 2x. Whoops. Okay, now, to get y prime by itself, I'm going to multiply both sides by y. I'm going to bring that up. So this will be y multiplied by 5x to the fourth. Now, my 2's are going to cancel here, so this is going to become x over x squared plus 1 minus, well, this time the, the 2 doesn't have anything to cancel with, but this is going to become 6x over x squared plus 2. Now, the last thing I'm going to do, because I, if I can at all avoid it, I don't want my derivative in terms of multiple variables. I prefer it if it was just in terms of one, the independent variable. So I'm going to get rid of that y there. 
but I know what y is. That's it's pretty easy because that's the original function. So this is going to be e to the x to the fifth multiplied by the square root of x squared plus one over x squared plus two cubed multiplied by 5x to the fourth plus x over x squared plus 1 minus 6x over x squared plus 2. And actually this is where I'm going to get, uh, this is where I let my students, I should say, stop right here. Okay, I wouldn't expect them to go any further than this. Now you could, you could definitely find common denominators, add those together, and, and that's, that's great. It's probably a, a great idea to do that. But I'm just interested right now in basically communicating the idea here that what we're doing here is when you get an expression that's, that's complicated or, or like I said, even impossible, and I'll show you in a second here what I mean by that, that you can use logarithms to split that up and then take the derivative term by term. But just remember that you're, you're taking the derivative implicitly here. Uh, let's take a look at another, another example. So let's say y is equal to the cube root of x cosine of x over x squared minus 1. Okay, so we're introducing some trigonometry here. And once again, it's not even that this is going to be a, a terribly difficult derivative to take, but it is going to take several steps. It's going to be a little bit long, so maybe we get lazy here and we're going to take, uh, we're going to use the natural logarithm to help us out with this. So I'll take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of y will equal the natural log of the cube root of x cosine of x over x squared minus 1. Okay? And actually what I'm going to do here is because I know I'm going to run out of space here. I'm actually going to just link this uh, across here. I wouldn't normally like to do equal signs like this uh, just because it doesn't look quite as nice. But this is all going to be to the one-third. So I'm going to bring that out front here. So this will be one-third natural log of x cosine of x over x squared minus 1. And so now I can say that the natural log of y will equal 1 third, and I'm going to now use the laws of logarithms to expand this argument out. But bear in mind that that 1 third is going to be multiplied by all of that. Most common mistake here is to simply start this and go, okay, this will be the natural log of x plus the natural log of the cosine of x, let me put parentheses there, minus the natural log of x squared minus 1. I see this, this sort of thing happen a lot here, where that one-third is only applied to that one part of that argument. All you got to do to fix that is put parentheses around that. That's it. Now let's take the derivative, so this will become 1 over y, y primed, will equal one-third, that's just a coefficient, uh, 1 over x, multiplied by 1, so that's, that's good, plus, so, I, and I like this, I like where this goes, this, this little derivative right here is going to be very suggestive of some rules that you will see later on, and I, I wish I had time to go over stuff like this now, but they got a goal to accomplish here, and this is a little bit beyond it. The derivative of the natural log of cosine is going to be 1 over cosine, and then multiplied by the derivative of cosine, which will be negative sine of x. Okay, and then this is going to be minus 1 over x squared minus 1, that's the derivative of the natural log, multiplied by 2x. Okay, now I'm going to multiply up by the y, okay, so this is going to become y primed is going to equal basically y over 3 multiplied by 1 over x, now watch this, minus sine over cos is tangent, minus the tangent of x. And this is going to be minus 2x over x squared minus 1. Now, we're almost there. We're not quite done. The very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that y with what it was originally here. So now we're going to get y prime. The derivative is going to be 1 third of the cube root of x cosine of x over x squared minus 1 multiplied by 1 over x minus the tangent of x minus 2x over x squared minus 1. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And isn't it interesting, isn't it interesting that the derivative of the natural log of cosine 
gets you negative tangent. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Anyway, let's look at a couple of other examples. Uh, the ones that I just did were examples of questions that were really just awkward and, and long to do. And it's, I mean, it's debatable. Some of you might say, well, that, what I did there didn't really make it shorter. And that's, that's fair. I, I wouldn't argue that at all. Uh, some of you are probably comfortable enough with the laws of logarithms that you can run through that sort of stuff quite quickly. So that's, that's really not the issue. I just want you to get the pattern. But watch this here. What if I asked you something just as, as simple and straightforward as, what's the derivative of x to the x? See, this isn't quite polynomial because although the variable is in the base and that's good, there's a variable in the exponent. But it's not quite exponential because there's a variable in the exponent. Yeah, but there's also a variable in the base. So this is kind of riding that line between those two types of functions. And I mean, if it was, let's watch this. If it was y is equal to x squared, uh, the derivative is just 2x. That's easy. I bring down that constant and subtract 1 from it. If it was y equals 2 to the x, that is also fairly straightforward. This is going to be 2 to the x multiplied by the natural log of 2. But it's not quite either one of those. And so in order to take the derivative of this, I actually need to take the natural log of both sides. Because now what I can do with this is I can say the natural log of y is going to equal x multiplied by the natural log of x. And I had, I had hinted at this before, or mentioned this before in a previous video, that one of the interesting things about, natu about logarithms in general is this property of bringing down that exponent, which kind of looks like a derivative, although it's, it's not. It's a, it's a different property altogether. But now I can take the derivative of this implicitly, and I'll get 1 over y, y primed. And this right here is going to require the product rule because that's x multiplied by the natural log of x. So the derivative of x is just going to be 1 multiplied by the natural log of x plus x multiplied by the derivative of the natural log, which will be 1 over x. Okay, so to get my derivative, I will, whoops, I will multiply up by y. So y multiplied by, well, that's just the natural log of x plus 1. And so as a result here, I can now replace the y with what it was originally and get x to the x multiplied by the natural log of x plus 1. And that's the derivative of x to the x, which is interesting, okay? It's an interesting relationship there. And again, not, not immediately obvious if you, if, if you were to try this without using logarithms, uh, you'd really, really struggle with that. Now just to finish this off, let's just take a look at one more, and it'll be very similar to what we just did here. This will be x to the sine of x, or I could have done sine of x to the x, but the, the issue is here that this is a good tool to use if you've got x in the base and x in the exponent of an exponential function, or, or actually whatever you would, would call that. Uh, so again, we're going to take the natural log of both sides and that's useful because that allows me to bring that sinusoidal function down. Now it's just taking the derivative implicitly. So 1 over y, y primed is going to equal, well, the derivative of sine x is the cosine of x multiplied by the natural log of x plus sine x multiplied by the derivative of the natural log, 1 over x. Now, bear in mind that this is, this is the sine of x multiplied by 1 over x. It's not x multiplied by 1 over x. I can't cancel those x's, okay? I've got a sine function acting on that x. It's not something that I can just cancel. Please, please don't do that. So y prime is going to equal y multiplied by the cosine of x multiplied by the natural log of x plus the sine of x over x, which becomes x to the sine of x multiplied by the cosine of x, natural log of x, plus the sine of x over x. And that's what I was, that's what I'm shooting for here. There's the derivative. And notice, really, really simple function, but the derivative is, is sort of complicated there. Anyway, so I hope that idea of logarithmic differentiation makes sense. It is, 
it is necessary when you've got a function that's got a variable in the base and the variable in the exponent. Uh, you can use logarithms to split those up. Now you didn't even have to be the natural log, by the way. I could have used any any log base. Uh, it's just that the natural logarithm, uh, and we've seen this over the last uh, few lessons here, the natural logarithm is just really convenient. Its derivative is so straightforward. So anyway, I hope that makes sense.